If you are feeling lost in your programming journey, you are in for a treat. I'm Christian and today I'm sharing nine mistakes that get most coders and programmers to quit early and I'm gonna show you how to avoid them. I was a barista, I learned how to code and became a developer. I traveled in dozens of countries. I lived in multiple cities just because one day I made a decision to learn to code. And my mission is to help people just like you learn code and get a remote developer job so you can experience the same things I did and more. So let's get into it. Section one, the importance of a timeline. We all start with passion, but without a timeline, that excitement can fizzle out. Trust me, I've been there. Not setting a roadmap means you might wander aimlessly, losing sight of your milestones and goals. And I want you to create a realistic schedule for learning, coding, and even applying for jobs. And don't forget to track your time. Tools like Toggle can be a game changer. Accountability is key. I would recommend beginners to set easy to hit consistent wins. Like for example, just opening the code editor or just staying focused for 30 minutes. The last thing you want is to crash and burn because you pushed yourself to code for four or five hours a day from the very beginning. You need to build your stamina and it takes time. It takes roughly 1,000 hours to become a developer and that boils down to 2.7 hours a day for 12 months. Start with 30 minutes a day and with time you'll end up coding 4 or 5 hours a day. I made the habit tracker for my clients that helps with this and I will link it in the description so you can use it as well. Section 2. Avoid language overload. When learning programming it's tempting to dabble in multiple languages. but you need to hold on, okay? Mastering one language first is crucial, especially if you are eyeing a specific job in the industry. Learning programming languages is like building a toolkit. But here's the thing, don't overload your toolkit before you've mastered the essentials. Imagine you are learning front-end development. Don't let yourself get distracted by trying to learn PHP, Java, Python, and C Sharp all at once. Specializing in one language gives you a competitive edge. Build a solid foundation in your chosen stack and you'll be good to explore other areas. Okay, JavaScript and Python are the easiest to pick up because they are very forgiving. The logic though is what takes time to understand. Don't be discouraged if you hear JavaScript is easy, but you still don't get it. JavaScript or Python are easier, but are not a piece of cake like HTML and CSS, for example. Section three, embrace consistency. Consistency is the secret sauce to successful learning. Just like immersing yourself in a new language you need to immerse yourself in coding. It's about creating a continuous learning loop. Stick to your timeline, even if it's just one hour a day. Consistency forms strong habits that propel your coding journey forward. This is the baseline consistency everyone talks about. The second level of consistency though, is to consistently get better, okay? The last thing you want is to stagnate and stop pushing because you will stop growing. This is something I call progressive overload. Section four, learning your learning style. Did you know that we are all learning differently? It's true for coding too. Experiment with various learning methods to find what clicks best for you. Explore video tutorials, documentation, books, and even dissecting and reading others' code. Tailoring your learning style boosts your efficiency. The way I learn best is by doing. Try to find the least amount of skills you need to be able to be productive and build as much as possible with the least amount of information you have. You can check the free coding course from my program where I show you exactly this principle in practice. You will learn how to build the Apple website in just a couple of weeks with very little knowledge. Section five, prioritizing progress over perfection. Starting off, Perfection isn't a goal, it's about progress, okay? Don't spend endless hours perfecting your code syntax. Get your hands dirty and get things working. Build your projects first, then refine them. Focus on functionality, then elegance. Your coding skills will evolve and elegant code will come naturally. When I started snowboarding, I didn't want to fall and look like a fool. That made me fall harder because I was stiffer than a rock. When I embraced failure, I started to flow and actually go down the slope and have fun. Section six, escaping tutorial hell. It's time to break free from tutorial hell by applying what you learn immediately after a tutorial. After a tutorial, tweak the project, change the UI, use different APIs. By owning your project, you cement your learning. Most people fall into the tutorial hell because they think they need to know everything before they can create anything further from the truth. You can become productive faster. When you hit a roadblock, just do a Google search. This is called just-in-time learning. Section seven, syntax overload. Memorizing syntax is like memorizing a dictionary. 
Don't stress over it. Code, editor, extensions, and practice will refine your syntax skill. Focus on understanding concepts and logic. Syntax mastery comes with time and practice. There are two types of syntax that people refer to. Advanced people are referring to the exact methods of callbacks needed to achieve something, and beginners are referring to the actual writing of keywords, etc. You need to master your keywords, and this takes two weeks or so, but the other type of syntax is always at the Google search reach, so don't stress about it. You need to know the basic syntax, so you have confidence and not think about it when coding something. Section eight, frameworks after fundamentals. Frameworks are awesome, but not without a solid core language foundation. Don't rush into frameworks without mastering the basics first. Learn your language, build projects, and then embrace the frameworks. You'll adapt faster, staying ahead in the dynamic tech world. The difference between pros and noobs is that the pros master the fundamentals either by mistake or intentionally. If you master the fundamentals of problem solving and programming, you can learn any framework and technology. It all boils down to the same concepts. Your fundamentals will give you confidence and make you a better developer. In section nine, the power to persevere. Remember, bumps are part of the learning journey. Don't let them block your path. Perseverance fuels growth. When stuck, give it your all for 30 minutes. Seek solutions and if needed, step back. Clarity often follows a fresh perspective. When you drive from home to work, you'll hit red lights and traffic jams. It doesn't mean you're not getting to your destination. It means you need to be patient. You won't quit and go back home, right? I often think I have to be perfect. That's not possible. We are not machines. What matters is if on average you are getting better and getting closer to your goal. A bad day here and there will not ruin months of progress. Those who understand this fundamental principle will always be successful. Recognize these traps and use these strategies to power through. If you've got more insights or experiences to share, drop them in the comments. Remember, every mistake is a stepping stone to success. Keep coding, keep learning, and keep thriving. Thank you for watching this video on avoiding common learning mistakes in programming. If you found this helpful, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. If you want to be coached in your journey, you can apply for my mentorship program. That's the first link in the description. And if you wanna check out my program before you join, that should be the second link in the description. You'll be getting a bunch of resources and things that will help you get started as a programmer. And that's pretty much it. If you're interested, hit up those links and I'll see you in the next one.